Hi, welcome to the Chiropractic Personal Injury Marketing Show. I'm Dr. Paul Holleran, and I'm talking with Dr. Matt. And Dr. Matt is with the Personal Injury Institute. How are you doing today, Matt? Greg, how are you, Doc? Good, good. And, and we're doing a series with Dr. Matt because uh, of his knowledge base in Colossus, the, uh, the personal injury software program that is so vital and important, not only for reimbursement, for report writing, and it's a great marketing tool. And so the topic we're covering today is coding and reimbursement. So, Dr. Matt, if I'm a chiropractor and I said to you, well, what's the importance of Colossus to coding and billing? What would you tell me? Well, you know, from a, from a chiropractic standpoint, you know, we have uh, a huge leverage opportunity, physician's records being the most important part of the process. And then once we get to the diagnostic area, we have these codes. And then we have billing protocols, and, and without complete understanding of how to uh, bill our records and uh, deal with potentially others reading these records, then we're, we're grossly misunderstanding the entire process. Uh, I'll give an example, HIP for forms were uh, you know, made for a particular reason. They're going to be used more and more often. And as a result, if we're not understanding the process related to the building as well as uh, the use of these forms, uh, then you know there could be some losses where doctors will lose uh, more money as a as a result. You know, you you were telling me something actually I didn't know the other day was uh, that the Hickfer foams are owned by the company who owns Colossus. That is correct. Yep, uh, Computer Science Corporation uh, owns the copyright to the Hickfer forms, and uh, that is correct. That might say something about how important the billing and coding is relative to Colossus. <laughs> Absolutely, because that is a, uh, a standardized form that the government has authorized uh, you know, the insurance companies to operate by, uh, including Medicaid. And so uh, the HICFA forms are not going away, and doctors, uh, in, in terms of our billing and, and that process, is really, really important, understanding all the, the details, and then obviously our assistants and our billers will utilize that. But we, we need to take a peek in there and make sure that uh, it, it's going the way that we uh, want it to. Now, can you give me an example of maybe um, one, one or two billing or coding uh, areas of where knowing Colossus is really beneficial? Sure. You know, in, in terms of uh, billing and, and our work and what we do, uh, we need to understand our diagnostics impact on the hip form itself. Very important detail and understanding how when we have uh, you know, four diagnoses or six diagnoses or eight diagnoses, we need to understand that process very well. In addition to that, making sure that our fees are in line and that they're accurate for the region. It depends on the state that you practice in. Uh, sometimes it's county-based, sometimes it's based on Medicare guidelines. If there's a lot of different factors, but it seems to always revolve around Medicare guidelines. Um, and, and then also looking to leverage the services we do more in the active codes because those actually are um, more valuable for the patient. Uh, it increases their function a lot faster. Uh, passive modalities are uh, codes that are, are not, um, they're being cut a lot more often. So, yeah, so that there's... Real important to understand that, that equation. Really Boy, that's the truth. I'm having, uh, you know, I talk with active therapy, not just clinically, but reimbursement wise with my doctors. And it seems like it's pulling teeth how they just have a hard time going from passive modalities like ultrasound and muscle stem to active therapies like therabands and rehabilitation. Yeah, you know, it's one of the things I, I uh, get the patient to expect. Uh, or I recommend my doctors to get the patient to expect that they're going to get this uh, this protocol and that within a couple of days, active rehabilitation will start. Um, you know, the sooner, the better in most instances so that the patient understands that this is where they're going. Uh, patients love to get therapy and roller tables and e stem and massage and hydroculated packs, all these things, but uh, converting them over to rehab is a new thing now. Now it's reactivating those injuries and, and so, uh, my, you know, my recommendation work with my doctors is, is exactly that. Now, you were, you were mentioning drivers. Can you explain that? Sure. Um, in terms of uh, drivers, uh, we have um, certain factors related to the records we do 
uh, patient symptoms, patient diagnoses, prognoses, and, and, and so on. But these things are particular um, factors that the software is evaluating to determine the value of what is actually injured on the patient, right? Because they need that information in order to determine exactly, you know, what what is accurate, what's not accurate, mm -hmm. how the symptoms are consistent with different aspects of the care, how the symptoms are consistent with the uh, injuries that were diagnosed, and how the symptoms led to particular referrals, and so on. Uh, so we have to have this information all line up. Otherwise, there's you know, there's no consistency in the record. Right. It's, it's a very, very important process. Now, what were the drivers that you were talking about? When I was talking to you earlier, you said there's two or three main drivers uh, relative to billing and coding. Uh, main, the, the most important uh, value driver is going to be diagnosis. The right? diagnosis codes. Diagnosis codes, right. Okay. And, and then uh, the second factor is going to be impairments, right? Because uh, the diagnoses determine uh, the injury. And then the, dis uh, the impairment is going to say what this injury actually did to this person, right? And so it makes sense that the insurance company needs some information to determine exactly uh, what, what should be done with that, that case, right? Because mm -hmm. if that's not delivered, uh, then what can they base anything on? And right. so typically they have to base it on limited information and therefore offer limited uh, funds as a result because nothing was determined, right? right. So, uh, so it's no fault to the system. It's just that this is the system that they need in order for them to create an accurate payment scale. Right. And so we as doctors control that equation in terms of our work. Can you give me like one common example that you see that the doctors are using one diagnosis that is routinely not as good as what they should be using that would be more beneficial and helpful to Colossus? Absolutely. Uh, let's look at the cervicalgia. Or I'll give you a second one, lumbago. These are, they have ICD-9 codes. It is a descriptive term of pain. They are Latin terms, so therefore they uh, describe uh, the injury as the patient would describe it. But what does it mean? You know, it's, it's an empty diagnosis because it could be uh, pain related to facet joint, pain related to a disc injury, uh, pain related to abnormal biomechanics. Uh, pain related to muscle spasm, you, you name it, we can just go on in right. any particular area that can be inflammation, muscle problems, tenderness, you know, you, you, you can go on and on. So mm -hmm. uh, we, we need to um, understand that and I'll tell you a lot of doctors, because uh, I'm also a peer review provider in the state of Texas, I know I'm, I'm a bad guy, but you know, I, I, I did that because I want to understand the entire process. Right. And, and so what I've learned in, in reviewing records is that doctors are, are um, I would have to say, lazy in, in this area. And, they, and they're and they not really thinking in this area. And they just have, you know, maybe four or five standard diagnoses they use. And that's easy. And, you know, a patient comes in and would be with trauma. And they'll say, okay, sprain, strain, muscle spasm, and then, you know, and then they're on. You know, so um, so there, there's definitely a process uh, of us becoming better doctors, which is really, really going to help us in the long run. And the example you just used, um, that's going to decrease their potential compensation in that case, wouldn't it? Absolutely. And let's look, let's look at a lean state, per se, uh, where they're looking at these, uh, these records and they're um, looking at all the parameters related to that. Um, if, if I was the insurance company and I saw records that were poor and I could see it just from the diagnostic standpoint um, and they were just, you know, just you know, muscle spasms, then you know, why, why should I offer that uh, case any more than the they monetary amount that, that's fair for that? Right. And if we, if we extrapolate, that, extrapolate that into marketing, when you know the difference, you can actually help, that helps with your marketing to translate and communicate that to the attorneys in what you know how to do to maximize their financial compensation. At the end of the day, I mean, you know, you know a lot of people will talk negatively about attorneys, but, you know, their job is to earn uh, a settlement for their client. And so their job is purely revolving around the dollar. And, and that's their job is to assist with that. 
And, and sometimes with us uh, chiropractors working closely with them, we need to understand how in the work that I do can impact what the work that they do. And, and, I, and, I, and I'll tell you, you know, yes, peer review doctor, and certainly the doctor that's involved with multiple offices, you know, I see that challenge all the time, that doctors, we, we, we have this challenge in that whole process, dealing with an attorney, and, and um, there's some of, uh, sometimes some resentment related to that. But the bottom line is that we as doctors have a certain job, and we need to perform it all the way through. And if we're not diagnosing properly, uh, then... You know, it, it, it should not be a great settlement. You know, it's just the way that the system is designed. Yeah, and you know, and again, uh, we talked about this before, but when I talk about marketing and PI marketing, it really, I always tell my clients, it always boils down to really four things. One is absolutely knowing the three phases of healing relative to each tissue. Number one, connecting that, quantifying and objectifying that, knowing how to do that, knowing how to create the impairment rating, and of course, the report, which coalesces all that material and basically uh, hands it to the attorney. And that's how you create value to the attorneys. And of course you create value to the attorneys. That's what creates more business. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and of course that's one of the major components of Colossus is in the report component, which again helps to maximize the, uh, the compensation, but it's certainly, uh, if anything, if you learn it, you can you can decrease your chances of minimizing compensation. Is that a fair statement? Absolutely. You know, there's many times uh, doctors don't even understand some of the dynamics and crashes, and so therefore they're they're not looking at injuries maybe the way they should. You know, and, and very commonly, very serious injuries are overlooked just by standard protocols that we use, you know, mm -hmm. static films, and, and just. Uh, looking at a static image. And we as chiropractors are motion doctors, and, and when this part is missed, uh, many times there's some significant injuries that, that are missed and uh, can make a huge difference with that person because when these uh, uh, serious injuries are missed, uh, early degenerative changes are going to set their course. And you know, you can have uh, you know, a 25 year old, and you know, within uh, 10 years, we'll have degenerative changes. Mm -hmm. that's, uh, that's purely as a result of motor vehicle trauma. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot, man. Again, Matt, Dr. Matt is um, the owner and founder of the Personal Injury Institute, and we've incorporated uh, his Colossus portion into our marketing program because I see the value of it that the doctors need to understand Colossus. So we're doing this mini series on Colossus with Dr. Matt. And so if you can pick up on another show, Matt, that'll be it for today. And we'll pick back up with you on another show. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Paul. You take care.